One of the most terrifying scenarios that can occur with an electric vehicle is what is known as a vapour cloud explosion, or VPE for short. This is a fairly complex phenomenon, but I'm going to do my best to simplify it in this video and help you get an understanding of it. Buckle up for this one, it is pretty scary. <laughs> Welcome back to another EV video. If you enjoy these videos, please do hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Okay, EVs. One thing that's well understood and very well publicised is what happens when an EV catches fire. It's well known that these fires are much harder to combat than a typical fire. They typically require thousands of litres of water to try and extinguish. They can reignite days or even weeks after the initial fire. And because the energy and the fuel for the fire are stored inside the cells of the battery, smothering the fire and cutting off the oxygen supply doesn't work either. Now, all these principles are pretty well known, pretty well spoken about, pretty well understood. But one area that is not well understood or spoken about at all, as we're going to see in this video, are vapour cloud explosions. And in many ways, they are much, much worse. Now let me show you an example of a vapour cloud explosion before we go any further. And as you watch this, pay attention to how close the firefighters are to the incident. First thing to mention, of course, look how close the firefighters were to that explosion. They had no idea of the danger that they were in. And I put this down to this phenomenon simply just is not well enough understood or spoken about. And therefore, there are no safety protocols established for them to follow. Obviously, they can see the vapour cloud, but it's often mistaken for smoke or steam. And my honest thoughts on this is, well, it's just one further area where in our haste to try and reach net zero targets at any cost, we've been negligent towards the proper, adequate research and training. And there's no other way to put it, it's risking lives. So what's actually happening here? Well, it all starts with failure of the battery, of course. That might be through physical damage, maybe it's punctured, or it could just be degradation of the battery in general. It then starts to enter a state known as thermal runaway, wherein the cells just get hotter and hotter and hotter inside that battery until they start to vent. That's the cloud that we've seen in that video. Now, if a fire occurs quite quickly, this combustible cloud is just going to be consumed by that fire and there won't be an explosion. However, if the ignition is delayed, these chemicals in that cloud get a chance to incorporate, then the chances of an explosion are really quite high. Next up, let's take a look at another really good example of this. Now, this is a Tesla that's ran over some road debris and it's told by Professor Eric Christensen, one of the pioneers of research into this topic. And you have an unconfined vapor cloud explosion. Tesla drove over some debris, punctured the, the battery case. Uh, some time later, he parked up in a garage and up it went. Six seconds from the first appearance of the vapor cloud. Three cars, one, one on one side and two on the other, taken out. If you don't get immediate ignition and the firefighters have to deal with a large battery EV, for example, in an underground car park, they could be facing smoke diving in a potentially explosive and toxic atmosphere. Now, as if it needs to be any scarier, think about where these EVs are stored. There's charger stations underneath buildings. You're going to find them in petrol station forecourts now as well. Even think about multi-stories that are filled with these types of vehicles. Scary stuff indeed. In summary, I believe issues like this that haven't been explored properly or researched properly are a result and culmination of everyone favouring their own agendas. If we look at manufacturers, they are so caught up in the commercial aspect of it with falling EV sales, they're desperate to try and shift more units. Meanwhile, the government are under pressure to reintroduce subsidies and we've got big energy companies in their haste once again to try and meet net zero, investing very heavily in their energy networks and keen to recoup some of the cost. It's almost as if no 
one has actually paused for a moment and went, hang on, this is all quite dangerous actually. To give you an idea how prevalent it is, the London Fire Service alone are currently called out a minimum of every two days to extinguish a light electric vehicle fire. And that's not including the buses. Now that's it from me, over to you. I love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below, so please do leave one. And one final tip, if you are planning on buying an EV, hopefully not, or an internal combustion car anytime soon, remember to use vehiclescore.co.uk. Free service, put the plate of the car you're thinking about buying in there and it will tell you all the good and bad points about that particular car. They also do paid HPI reports. Here is a 15% discount voucher on screen now so you have no excuses. The link is in the description below. But that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.